Alrighty folks, so today we're going to go through the workflow for a kinetic type motion design project. And I will take us right through all the way to this in here where we are um, going to just do the pre-production or the, the um, up to the animatic stage. All right. So, of course, we need to source our audio um, and make a backup. Using a Word doc, type out the audio. So I have done that. The audio we will be using today is uh, Seth Rogen doing a transit uh, PSA. Let's listen. Hey, Vancouver, it's Seth. And here's a tip to make your transit ride even more awesome. I love music just as much as you do, but to be honest, I'm probably not a fan of your music. So please turn it down. You're killing us here. And you're damaging your own hearing. Nobody is winning in this situation. Hey. Okay, so now we have our kinetic type. Um, sorry, we have our uh, audio file. So now what I've done is um, actually, this was a YouTube video, so what I did was uh, just copy-pasted the, um, the closed captioning and then just made sure that everything was working, uh, that it made sense, that it was spelled correctly, of course, and, um, and that the words um, were actually correct, that the ones he was saying. Of course, you would get this uh, from a client if you were working with one. So what you'll also see is that I've separated them into paragraphs. And what I basically want to um, uh, touch on here is that each of these could be a scene or a beat. And even though, even if you want the entire piece to just be one flowing um, motion design, it still is... Um, when he's talking, he's saying, hey, Vancouver, it's Seth. This is a tip. Okay, that's one thing he's saying. Then, I love music, but I don't like yours. And then he's saying, turn it down, and no one's, um, yeah, and you're damaging your own hearing. And then the last one is, nobody is winning. So, I see those as scenes, and so I will set those up um, accordingly. All right, so if we get into Blackboard here, or into uh, After Effects. What I'm going to do is just hit the, the asterisk key, or I think it's Control-8, um, but on a number pad, it's just the, the multiplication or the asterisk key. And I'm just gonna play this a few times and then make my markers. Hey Vancouver, it's Seth. And here's a tip to make your transit ride even more awesome. I love music just as much as you do, but to be honest, I'm probably not a fan of your music. So please turn it down, you're killing us here and you're damaging your own hearing, nobody is winning in this situation. Hey Vancouver, it's Seth, and here's a tip to make your transit ride even more awesome. I love music just as much as you do, but to be honest, I'm probably not a fan of your music. So please turn it down, you're killing us here. All and right. you're So that feels good so far. So what I would do next is go and twirl down um, this layer and then see where if I got it exact. So. I'm gonna hold down shift as I drag around and you can see this one's pretty close here. So I'm gonna hit the plus uh, arrow and just move this over just a bit so that there's, there's no mistaking that uh, this is a beat here. And here's a tip to make your transit ride even more awesome. I and you can see here I'm a bit late again. So I would just slide that one over and I'm gonna hold the space bar down and just go through my entire project here and see if I'm uh, how close I was on it hit space and preview music just as much as you do but to be honest and with an old laggy computer it's gonna take a while to be on you can also hold down the control or command key and and drag around so I see but right here so that's going to be moved over just a bit and then keep going. Not a fan of your music. So please turn. So you can see here, I missed that because this is so, so please. So that's going to come back there. 
Please turn it down. You're ki You're killing us here. Down. You're killing us. Okay, so I missed that one as well. So just slide that one over. You're killing us here. And, and you're damaging. Yeah. Again, late. And I would want to make sure that's just as close as possible, just so I'm accurate. Nobody is winning in this situation. And then that's the last one there. So now I have my markers. Now I can just go ahead and bring in each one of my uh, pieces. So you saw before I had it all typed out. So what I could easily do is just click and drag uh, to copy and come back in, get a text layer, paste, and make sure you don't have a nasty um, font. All right, so now I have my text layer, so I know that this is going to start here, so I'm just going to hold down shift and hit the left square bracket. To, uh, to make it start at that point, and then shift again. And I'm going to go Alt or Option and right square bracket to chop that there. Okay, so you see here, I mean, I this is how I like to do it, but if you already had storyboards, that's great. You can do that too. Um, so basically then I would just keep going through and make my scenes. Um, you'll also note that I didn't, um, uh, oh, yeah, that's right. I assumed that this was the beginning. Hey, it's Seth. And he so this is actually right at the beginning, right? Um, you'll also note that I didn't adjust the time for the beginning and end. So I would just control or command K and get, um, uh, just add some time. Here. So maybe go to 25 just to be sure. Click OK. And then you'll see that it always adds it to the end. So you'll see that um, now if I click and drag this over, now these markers are out of alignment. So what I would do instead, what I would suggest, if you're, well, set up your project first, but you can also highlight the actual layer and then make those markers on the layer as well. I'm going to hold um, sometimes K and J will will work. This does, doesn't seem to be uh, for me this time, but it'll snap to the next keyframe or marker. And you can also right click on these and go to settings and you can give them color you can actually give them a duration too if you want to be very specific that's how some it's actually easier to do that in premiere pro and so i'm just recreating my markers because now i can slide this over and my markers will stay uh, where they should be now I can just go up to here. If I deselect that and right click, then I can delete all markers and it'll delete everything off of there. All right, then I would just slide over my text to make sure it's in the middle or in the right spot, I should say. All right, so this is a finished version of it. Let's have a look at the full, uh, at the fully finished uh, version and you can see actually rendered out and it saved the markers onto the P onto the MP4, which is kind of cool. Hey Vancouver, it's Seth, and here's a tip to make your transit ride even more awesome. I love music just as much as you do, but to be honest, I'm probably not a fan of your music. So please turn it down, you're killing us here. And you're damaging your own hearing, nobody is winning in this situation. So you can see I've added a, a title card to the beginning and one to the end. Now notice that, um, uh, so that's this is the rendered version. If I go into the actual file where you can see I've actually added 
uh, a golden ratio, just a PNG with um, transparency. And I've created, I've made it a guide layer. So you just right click on a layer and change it to a guide layer. And what that means is you can leave it on all the time. You don't need to worry, but it, it, it won't get rendered. Okay, now you'll also see that I have a uh, grid here, a proportional grid. And that is located right in here, right beside your little toggle mask and shape visibility. You'll see here, and then I have it proportion, proportional grid. And so that, whenever this is, uh, whoops, whenever this is uh, playing, it turns it off. It doesn't turn off the uh, guide layer, which is kind of annoying. So you could just turn that off. But whenever it's stopped, and I'm maybe doing any design, you'll see that this proportional grid comes back. So the way we want to set that up is by going up to Edit Preferences on a PC or on a Mac, it's File or under Adobe After Effects. Preferences, and then you'll go to Grids and Guides. Okay, and what you'll get eventually or maybe not, there we go, is your grids and guides option. And then we want to check our proportional grid and change this to three by three. Okay. And then that way we get our nice rule of thirds and we can set it up that way. So you'll see that I've, I've separated all these elements, put them into their little, um, into their little scenes. And you'll also note that I have um, markers for each beat and there's more beats per scene here um, and just for just so it was easy for us to see i just you know made different backgrounds but what you can do now is either just replace all of these elements with your with your actual designs whether they're from uh, photoshop or illustrator or you're just building in here or what i like to do personally is to pre-compose my scenes into uh, their own comps. So what I would do then is select all the files that I wanted, uh, not that one, this one here. So select all of these first ones, right click anywhere and go pre-compose. Okay, and what that will do is gives you the option to name it, of course. So we want this to be opening title card and it only gives you the option to move uh, and you'll see it gives you the option whether or not to open that. Now, this is good, adjust composition duration to the time, time span of the selected layers. So this is important later because without doing this, it will, um, your comp will be the length of this comp. Even though this, uh, these layers are only three seconds, it'll be 23 seconds. So I'm just gonna click that and click okay. And now you'll see I have one comp here and I can do the same with the rest of these. So I would just, I'll just do two just to give you an example. And I'll right click this time and go pre-compose. And instead of this, I'll, I'll un, undo this. Uh, I will, um, we could call it scene one, I guess, or you could actually keep the, um, the, the name of what he says, but I'll just, Let's call it scene one here and now you'll see that it actually just sort of randomly created this entire comp and so now what I would do is I would open this scene up and find out where the the beginning of it is and I would hit uh, B and then go here and N for my work area and then I would right click and say trim comp to work area and then if I go back out to my main comp, you'll see that it's trimmed it, but it actually put it back to the beginning. So and then I would have to sh hold down shift and slide that back in. So much easier to make sure that that, um, oops, we don't want that, we want that and this. If I just right click, now let's see if it, uh, if it works for me. So we'll go pre-compose and I'll adjust the duration and I'll just say scene two and click OK. And now you'll see it puts it back. It puts it in the exact same spot or the exact correct spot. 
So now what I, um, the, only, the only problem with doing it scene by scene here is that now if I go into this scene, I don't actually have the audio file that's in this. So if I wanted to go and do some work in this, I would actually want to go and grab that, um, this uh, file here, copy it over, go into my scene to paste it in here. But now I don't know where exactly it is. So it, it's a matter of preference whether you want to do this uh, pre-composing. What you could do um, is actually um, create, uh, create copies of these and pre-compose with them. So for example, control D to duplicate and then select the actual one I wanted and this one and that background there and then pre-compose and we'll see if this is going to work so pre-compose and then i would just leave that off and uh, scene uh, three and i'm going to open this one this time just so we can see what it looks like so again it's just put it up where it's you know in the in the middle here but this time it actually left my the copy of my audio here in the right spot so I could go in here and I could do my work. Please and, turn it uh, down. You're killing us here. And you're damaging your own hearing. Nobody is winning. In okay. I could, if I really wanted to, I could bring, come in here and, and trim these. Just, I'm still holding down shift. And then I could uh, trim to this, to these points, but it's not really necessary. It's just extra work. Um, yeah, what you want to make sure of, is, I mean, in here we could just, trim this off just so we're not confused by so by please turn it down um, but what you want to make sure of is that you turn this one off when you're finished with it and you only want one main um, audio file out in the main project otherwise you'll get this weird echoing and it'll it'll be craziness all right so there's a couple of different ways you can go about your workflow but certainly following this um, these sort of checklist will help you. Um, like I said, like I did here, I created text layers, but you can also just go ahead and import your storyboards and then adjust those elements to fit them. And then you could pre-compose each one of these and, uh, and keep going. All right. So I will leave it there and, um, and let you move along with your projects. Thanks, everyone.